Hey folks, in this video, I want to ramp about the browser in Bitwig Studio, this one here. And the browser was updated with 5.0 last year. And I still think it's the best browser we had. And it's probably also the best browser you can get in any DAW. I'm not really sure about this. I'm not up to date. Um, but my favorite features of this browser is that you can search for things like your compressor and it finds you also synonyms here like dynam dynamics. And it also gives you here um, devices and presets just in one window, in one result window, before we had to switch between different tabs, devices and presets. So this one is much better. And my second favorite feature is that you can change here the sort order to by date. So now I can basically find my recent presets I worked on right here, the sidechain quantizer and the last preset I made. So I can just, you know, find the recent presets and continue work on it. Um, so these are basically my two favorite features of the browser. The rest of the stuff, in my opinion, is a lot of visual clutter and stuff I don't care for. So like categories or creator um, things. So maybe I use creator for my own uh, for my own presets here when I search only for my presets um, or devices. I never use this actually or tags here. What does tags actually don't mean anything? They are completely relative to a lot of different contexts. Um, so let's say analog, what does analog mean? Is it actually a sample or a sample preset of uh, a real synth sampled? Or is it a digital synth um, that's modeled after an analog synthesizer? So it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so a lot of these tags actually don't make sense to me. So I don't use them. So this on the left side here is completely useless most of the times for me. So it would be nice to actually be able to hide this in a way to remove uh, visual clutter. I think you can, right? In a way, um, maybe you can change this here at some point. I'm not really sure. Um, but also, I don't want to define all these things. When I do presets here in Bitwig, let's say I do a polymer sound, right? And then I want to save this as a preset. I want to get rid of, you can also you know, move this now around, this is now also new. Um, I want to get rid of this preset as quickly as possible. I usually just want to hit OK and save this for later. And I don't want to care for defining a name. There needs to be uh, some kind of dice symbol where I can click on it and then it defines your name. A lot of VST plugins do this lately and I think it's re really great. Just want to have a random name in here. Uh, maybe a su suggestion or something like this. Uh, also category. I don't know what, sh what kind of category I have to define most of the times. Uh, text, like I said, is it acoustic? Yeah, it's, it's a digital synth, but I, it's modeled after, you know, an analog synthesizer. So I use analog here. It's also a digital synth. Of course, it's polymer. It's inside of the door, inside of my computer. It's digital. Is it rhythmic? Yeah, of course, there's modulation on there that's time based. Uh, is it fast? Uh, in context of my ambient tune, it's actually fast in, terms of a drum bass tune, it's slow, right? Is it hard? Mm, depends. In context of my ambient tune, it's of course a hard sound, but in context of a hard techno tune, it's more like soft, right? Is it dark? I don't know. If I play actually a dark scale, then yes. If I play a major, then no. So it doesn't make any sense to, to define tags f for myself. And even when I have a good system, in my brain on how to attach tags, right? I still left with a bad feeling that I used the wrong tags when I hit save, right? And I have then still this bad feeling that I maybe never find this preset again because I used the wrong tags, or maybe I have a different system of tagging stuff, you know, one year later. So um, in my opinion, this needs to be defined automatically. So I use here this synonym tool all the time for samples. And I completely removed all my sample locations from Bitwig. I only use synonym and maybe XO as a plugin inside of Bitwig um, for searching for samples. 
So here I can search, let's say for claps and it gives me some samples here. Also samples where it doesn't match the name. So here I'm searching for claps and it gives me a Walmart 49 for whatever, for whatever reason. I can also see here um, the RMS level. I can see the crest factor, the pitch class, the note, note confidence, BPM, the brightness, how many overtones there are, right? The noisiness here. So this one is much noisier than this one, right? So you can see there's more noise in here. So it gives me a lot of um, additional information without me going in and define it by myself. It's all automatically um, classified, which I really like because I have so many samples on my hard drive and it's hard to find them if you don't have a good system of, you know, putting everything in the right directory and using tags and so on. And I don't want to do this. It draws time away from, from myself that I can use to make music, right? It also keeps my brain busy with all the wrong things. I don't want to think about giving the right name. I don't want to think about tags. I don't want to think about the right directory or is it, the, you know, stuff like this. I don't want to think about all that stuff. I just want to save what I did and then I want to find it at some point with some um, text, right? I want to search for Let's say in here, I want to search for a pad sound that is in C or that uses the C as a root note and maybe has modulations with 172 BPM. But I can't find it because I haven't, you know, tagged it right or used the right file convention or whatever. I need, I need to have this done automatically in the background. So it's not like a rant that I say, this is completely wrong. I still think it's the best browser we had in Bitwig Studio. It still works great, uh, but I think the direction needs to go into this automatic classification system at some point in the future, uh, because this one here at the left side only makes me feel bad in some way. I, uh, it makes me overwhelmed with, um, making decisions and fiddling around with multiple, right? I can search for multiple filters now here, container, and then, uh, you know, after it's too overwhelming or actually too overly complex designed in a way. I get why we have it and it makes completely sense for it to be there. Uh, it's the, but it's designed from kind of a developer viewpoint, right? So you have, oh, I'm a developer. I need to implement this. Um, I have your files. Okay, we need to attach um, metadata to these files. Then people can filter for it, right? It makes, makes sense from a developer standpoint, but from a user or musician standpoint, it's completely different. And I think you always have to think from the user first instead of, you know, from the technology first. So, um, so if you go in here, and you open up the browser, you have to ask yourself, what actually do I want as a user from this browser? I want to search for a specific sound. I want to type in a lot of words and then the result page should give me exactly that or stuff that matches roughly what I typed in without me having to, you know, create this whole library of well tagged presets, well tagged sounds and everything in the right directory and so on. And every time I download samples or create presets, I have still this bad feeling that I did something wrong with my library. So I usually feel bad using the internal browser nowadays. So I'm, you know, use this kind of thing here. Um, this Sononym app is also not perfect, right? but it goes into the right direction. It has the right ideas. Um, it's an HTML JavaScript application, so it's not really snappy. It takes a while to scan your files, but at least it gives me a different um, overview over my samples. Uh, it, makes, it makes it possible to find samples I never knew I had in, in certain situations. Or also XO, um, in here, this whole um, 
space, sample space here, gives me basically a nice view on my samples and find samples I would never use anywhere, any, anywhere else because, you know, it gives me a completely different uh, viewpoint and it's really great. Um, so I'm using this here exclusively for searching for drum sounds and never use anything else. If we had this inside of Bitwig, I probably would never use XO again. It's the only thing that keeps me using XO. I'm not specifically interested here in the sequencer. I can do this inside of Bitwig. Um, and I use the sample compiler here where I can replace certain, uh, certain samples automatically for something that sounds similar, right? It finds you similar samples. So when I um, use here a kick drum sound in this slot, right? I can say sample combiner, use a different random sample and gives me a different random kick drum, right? And the same class of the kick drum. So it's not like that it finds cymbals or snare drums. It gives you always kick drums here, which is really nice. And I think Ableton uh, started to implement this also with uh, the update 12. I think, I guess, something like this with a drum machine. So this needs to be in Bitwig Studio at some point. It opens up so many possibilities of making use of your samples. I'm pretty sure all of you have um, gigabytes, terabytes of samples on your hard drive and you never used maybe 90% of them because you always go to the right, you know, to the same directories, to the same files and just pull up your... Um, favorite kick drums, your favorite snares, and so on. Wouldn't it be great if you actually have here something like this? And I have here, for instance, here some kick drums I like. Like this, right? I like this kick drum, and then you right click and say search by similarity, and it finds you samples on your hard drive that sound kind of similar to this kick drum. Um, Right, and then you have here kick drums that kind of sound the same. That's exactly how I want to search for my sounds. And most of the times I search for sounds that sound similar because I have like this pet sound and I want to have this pet sound evolve into something different or maybe combine it with something different, but not completely different. I want to have something that sounds kind of the same, but a bit different, right? So these kind of features make sense. So in my opinion, the browser needs to go in this direction. Again, to summarize this, I still think the browser is great. It, it works great in my day-to-day -day work. I use it all the time. The left side here is a lot of clutter I don't care for. I don't use it, uh, but, but I still think it's great how it works at the moment here in the result page. Um, it's nice that we, that we have packages in here, the package manager, but also here, similarity feature would be nice. If I have a kick drum sampled inside of Bitwig Studio, right click, search for similar samples, and it pulls up some packages here from Bitwig Studio and shows me some, you know, some official content that sounds kind, kind of the same, would be nice. Um, so yeah, great browser, but I think it needs to be updated this year or next year in a direction where we have automatic classification, um, automatic cla uh, automatic tagging and so on, and also um, randomization of file names. And you save here, save as, right? Give me a random name. Also, when I save a preset, give me a random preset name. It's should be in there, in my opinion. So this, these are my five cents, two cents about the browser. So I don't want to rant about it, but I also want to give you my um, uh, my thoughts on it. So let me know what you think about the browser in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like the video and thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.